So welcome everyone to our discussion panel about open governance on both Kusama and Polkadot. So I'm Peter from Polkadoters. I'm also Polkadot ambassador, and I'll be leading the discussion in the panel. So first, let me introduce other panelists. So we got Kasper from Polymec, Alexei, CEO of Interlay, and we got Filippo from WebFree Foundation. So maybe for the beginning, a question for our audience. So who has already participated in governance? Is there anyone who already voted for some referendums? OK, pretty cool. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> So maybe just to put there a bit of context for our discussion. So currently, we have two versions of governance. We still have an old version of Gov on Polkadot, and also the, with a with council controlling the treasury funds and the technical committee responsible for fast-tracking referendums. But also, we have open Gov deployed on Kusama. So I would have a first question for panelists. And that is, like, what's the main difference between OpenGov and the governance which is deployed on Polkadot right now? And why do you think it's beneficial to have OpenGov instead of the old version of governance in the first place? So maybe, Filippo, we can start. Sure. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. OK. Um, I would say that governance, the first iteration of the governance, of course, was um, not was not that de as democratic as OpenGov, but this is because we, um, as Polkadot, uh, evolved from the start. Uh, we needed to have some control. So I don't know if somebody of you were at the talk today about uh, governance and OpenGov. Uh, governance version one on uh, Polkadot, they, we had the council and technical committee. These were, uh, I would say, centralized bodies with uh, the council uh, with uh, 13 members and uh, the technical committee with uh, th three entities. And um, the main difference with the transition to the open gov is that we want to have a, a governance that is uh, more democratic and everything goes through referenda. We don't have the council anymore. We don't have the technical committee, but we have the fellowship. It's a much bigger body that uh, is supposed to uh, have a lot of members in the future, a hundred, a thousand members, that um, will be able to whitelist some uh, specific proposal. And this is simply will allow this proposal to have like a, a, a very fast track compared to other origins. So um, yeah, I mean, it's mostly that making governance more democratic, but of course, there are some, uh, you know, as all uh, early implementation, there are some issues. So, but I think you will have some more question about this later yeah, on. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's going to come. <laughs> all right, thank you. So, so what do you guys think? Like, what's the biggest benefit of open golf, you know, in comparison to the old version of governance? I mean, I, I guess one of the reasons for open golf was the regulatory concerns. Mm -hmm. So, I, like, as a council, you have pretty clear exposure, right, to potential regulatory issues. I believe, yeah. I mean, there is networks that actually move back to delegations now. Mm -hmm. um, Polkadot had a council which was elected, and I think the issue was that it, where that was seen, it was more static, right? So you'd get votes, and you didn't have a lot of fluctuation. You had, like, a pretty set council. A lot of very early members from, like, Parity and, like, Polkadot core development. Um, and I believe it's good that it's now more decentralized. So you kind of, you have like different tracks and there is no like set council where you have to go and kind of lobby behind like to get uh, councillors yeah, to yeah, vote. Yeah. That's, that's kind of like what all of us were doing, you know, when we wanted to get some referenda passed, you know, so it was all about writing different councillors, you know, hey guys, can you please vote for me? So that's definitely nice, you know, to see this being removed from the ecosystem. But it doesn't, the thing is, it doesn't fix the problem because what you do now is you go lobby for whales. So we had a very fun experience when Kintsugi, unfortunately, produced, stopped producing blocks yeah. because of a runtime issue back in December, and we were the first ones to actually do a big proposal on Kusama OpenGov. First issue was, like, configuration issues, so you needed like, a lot of KSM to even just get it started. It has been fixed. But I ended up, you know, calling up, trying to find yeah. people, asking everybody, hey, guys, can you please yeah, vote? I, I remember those so times. Yeah. It was actually one of the first referendums in the open golf, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think it's kind of, you know, it, it doesn't solve the political problem. It 
makes it look more decentralized and I think it pushes you to more decentralization. But there has to be like also a will in the community and like also the bigger holders of, of the assets to actually commit to being mm -hmm. more decentralized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, thank you. So what about you, Casper? What do you think? No, I think it's again, it's the decentralization aspect, but it goes into that the real case is participation. Yeah. Yeah. Like we got away with the centralized, um, or centralized, but at least the elected council. But now we actually need to figure out how do we actually get participation, because you're looking at uh, a fully open decision making. But if only one percent of the token holders are voting, then I guess the downside about uh, open gov is either it takes a long time or the decisions are based on a very, very small percentage of people voting. So it sort of, it puts more requirements on the token holders as well. Mm -hmm. um, which is a good thing, I suppose. I think in the end it's a good thing, but it's also an implementation thing, because it's, yeah. you need to get the participation up before it really works. Mm -hmm. I think that's sort of what we've seen on, uh, on, on Kusama, that we transition to open golf before we actually fix the participation issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then that, that brings me to the question, like, would you see um, deployment of open golf to Kusama as a success? Like, are there any lessons, you know, from the past six months of open golf that we have already learned before we move to Polkadot? I mean, uh, I guess it still works, right? So it didn't die. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> it got battle tested, yeah. issues were fixed. So, I mean, I would guess it was a success because we now know what it can, what it cannot do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think Kusama yeah. did what it's supposed to do. Like, oh. we tested things out, yeah. there were learnings of it, and uh, slight chaos. Yeah, 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 that's true. I think the chaos is still happening <laughs> even right now. So. <laughs> Is, is we have already seen. So, so what do you think, Philippe? I wanted to set something. Yeah, I, I mean, in the end, you want to use the treasury funds, right? You want to, the treasury to accumulate wealth uh, over time without uh, using it, because, I mean, Polkadot and Kusama are inflationary, and you want to use, uh, um, I mean, some of the treasury funds to boost the growth of the ecosystem. So Gov1 wasn't able really, like, uh, to... Um, to avoid this accumulation. I think with OpenGov we found a way like to, to have a, a, a bigger rate of uh, expenditure with all these uh, different origin and uh, multiple, the possibility of have this uh, fast track on steroids. So uh, this actually works. It proved that, we, that it works, but of course um, we need to put in place some uh, uh, breaks Kind yeah, of. I, I think maybe it worked too well actually because there were like a lot of complaints for community that the treasury spending is like even even too high maybe. Yeah, I mean it, you have six trucks that are dedicated to the treasury. Yeah. So out of uh, 15, so basically uh, it's a big portion. I think there there need to be some equilibrium in order not to uh, in order to avoid that uh, the treasury gets depleted, right? So it, it has to be in place some co controls, some fail-safe measures that are not uh, looking to um, centralize or like where yeah, a few yeah. people have a lot of power to, mm -hmm. to decide the course of the, yeah. of the treasury. Yeah, so I think before we can, we will actually get to the kind of like drama which is happening right now in Kusama with the proposals being made. I would say at the, at the beginning, you know, of the whole thing was the fact that, or not the fact, but the opinion that the treasury is being depleted, you know, that there are like so many proposals that are maybe not so really useful for the network. And actually, during the discussions, there, there, there were some interesting ideas how to actually boost the treasury revenue. So there were some ideas floating around, like maybe we should stake the treasury funds or maybe we could do something else or provide maybe liquidity, you know, on some of the DEXs or DeFi applications we have in the ecosystem. So, so what's your opinion on that? Like, should we somehow utilize treasury funds to increase the revenue or is it something we should avoid? I mean, I, I guess, so if you, if you view, like, decentralized networks as post, if you think of corporate, and I, I do apologize for making that analogy, but if you think corporate, right, if you, if you see it as a, you know, post-IPO company, 
I mean, yes, they kind of you know, buy back their shares and they, they have like some management structures in place to kind of manage you know, the inflow and outflow of shares into the market. Um, you, what you don't see is payment and reinvest. So they, it's usually selling or buying, but they do that, right? So they will sell shares to buy assets in another company. Yeah. So from that, it kind of makes sense, I guess. Mm -hmm. However, and there is one but, post-IPO companies, it usually means that they're big, they have a business model, like they have adoption, they have like revenue streams that get money in, um, most of them, not all of course. So there's a risk of, you know, if you start optimizing for just spending like treasury and like playing liquidity games that you, you, you lose focus of the actual product because if we're honest, we're still all in startup phase. None of us have yeah, in the blockchain space sure. even found product market fits. So if you focus on really just now, how reinvesting treasury into other protocols, you know, it, it becomes a very intertwined financial structure that can break down. So it, it, I, my personal two cents is it can be done, but with, with, with a lot of caution and see like with Ethereum restaking is going and you know, yeah, there's yeah, pros yeah. and cons. So maybe let's take it like a, by small baby steps, you know. So, so would you agree maybe that like restaking funds, you know, in actually proof of stake or Polkadot, you know, might work because it's quite safe, you know, quite easy to do. So, so it might make sense to increase the revenue or maybe Filippo, what, what you think about that? Like, should we well, leave treasury as it is? Um, I, I probably see a much safer option to have like a fixed income from the inflation goes to the treasury. Yeah. Like mm. fixed, you know, of course it's not, uh, probably will disappoint, you know, the network participants a little bit, but at the same time, you don't have like, uh, you don't fall into the, in, you don't fall into the, um, you know, like situation where you're kind of not gambling, but uh, you know, like you're using treasury funds to, to stake. And then if it's a slash, what happens, you know, yeah. you put uh, the whole ecosystem into like uh, a risk, a financial risk. So I probably would say like, to make sure that funds can ac be accumulated constantly and, um, and to put in place like some control mechanism that doesn't allow to like big expenditure or like big depletion of, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my vision. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So what about you, Kasper? Yeah, I think we shouldn't start doing financial engineering with the treasury funds. The treasury funds are more there to actually support the ecosystem and not to, and there are already mechanisms in place to actually replenish the treasury and to incentivize that money is used. And I think that works. Um, then I think if there's more use cases for putting stuff at risk, that will go through a vote on treasury and probably on a power chain or something like that. Uh, for the treasury itself, I, I think it's more of making sure that people actually participate in it rather yeah. than uh, figuring out how to optimize the tokens while they're lying in the treasury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe if you move a bit forward in the discussion, so I would say one way to fix the issue with the treasury is like, you know, increase the revenue. But on the other hand, there have been, there has been quite a lot of spending on Kusama as well recently. And kind of there were complaints from the community that some of the spendings are not really justified. Maybe some of the proposals are not that, you know, high quality ones as we would expect in the ecosystem. So what do you think we can improve as a community on like cultivating the treasury system and the proposals overall? So as a community, we can make sure, you know, that the right proposals are going to pass and the bad ones, you know, will not get through. <clears throat> I mean, I guess it's leading by example, right? So I think you have to have a core group that's active and, you know, that just, you know, agrees to certain formats and to make sure that reporting happens. So, you know, mm -hmm reporting back, hey, we got the funds, we used it for, and being honest about it, say, well, look, we used it for this, this like online campaign and yeah, it didn't work out, but we learned X, Y, and Z, so in the future, we don't recommend using that medium because it doesn't yeah. make sense. But you have to have, I think, a core group of people that start doing this, and then, you know, it becomes a standard. Right now, of course, just saying, hey, we should do it, you can throw money at the problem and, you know, pay people to, you know, yeah. go verify and, and do like what like what three foundation grant has a grants team right and mm -hmm. they were very stringent but they were also having a struggle yeah, to keep up yeah. because it's so much work mm -hmm. yeah I, I guess that's what we are shaping right now i even saw 
So like a post on Polkadot forum, like describing, you know, what's the best way, how to write the proposal, what should be there, you know, how it should be done. So I guess we are slowly moving towards the direction, you know. So maybe, Philip, Philip, what's what's your take on that? Like, what can we do as a community to improve, you know, the whole like you know proposal system and yeah. make it a better? I mean, of course, uh, f from one side, you you want to make sure that there is some way of uh, accumulating treasury funds. From the other side, you also want to play uh, on the other, you know. Uh, part of the game where you don't want like to give up um, treasury funds very easily and uh, kind of uh, being a little bit more proactive by maybe defining things that needs to be done or like categories and then uh, incentivize like proposal to go in that specific categories instead like people like proposing kind of whatever they think it's good and they, no, get, they no. get the funding um, instantly also like to i think it's important to that people build their own uh, kind of brand and reputation before like they get uh, um, large amount of uh, you know of funds kind of like kind of sort of attract and try to prove that you're good before like uh, you get the funding and maybe depending on the size of the proposal it can be fully retroactive Fun, uh, retroactive funding where yeah, they put yeah. uh, their own like kind of risk something at the start and maybe bigger proposal can have like a part at, at the beginning and a part at the end but still like people must be have some track record that um, that they actually delivered something in the in the past because then you just give up funds and people don't don't make their promises or mm. they don't have the quality and I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so maybe w would you think that bounties are actually helpful in that manner? Because obviously, when someone comes to the treasury and asks for a really high amount, that's something we should be really cautious about. So maybe like a splitting the payment in chunks would make more sense. And do you think b bounties are actually useful yeah. tool for that? Yeah, I think I think this is one one solution that actually currently exists. But then you put a lot of trust in the curator. So then the, the, the quality of how well a bounty works depends on the curator, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it puts, it's a lot of effort. So we are curating the fiat on off ramp bounty now, and it's a lot of work to you know, get these proposals to work and review everything. Um, so you have to basically have people who stake their reputation, because that way if we basically just give, let's say, bounty, you know, whatever, just you know, give it to our friends, we'll lose our reputation. So yeah. I think you need to kind of, I think it, the technology doesn't f it f doesn't fix it. It's a self-regulating system because anybody can participate. So you had like, has anyone considered Nay coming in and it's self-regulating? It's just like with bounties, you'll have a few bad ones, but with time, you know, the bad ones will get washed out, and you'll have good actors who kind of t hopefully take lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the system dies, which yeah, hopefully yeah. won't happen. Yeah, ho hopefully we are going this way. Yeah. So so much about you, Casper. I think it's also looking at what is actually necessary. You see some of these treasury proposals where people are asking for three, four hundred dollars an hour for doing some kind of development, which there must be some kind of profit element in that. And I think when looking at treasury, it's sort of, it's more for the common good of the ecosystem. So looking at what the actual cost is, is one thing. And then you can say the bounty element or the uh, sort of profit or tip element will come on top. So I think there's also a lot maybe to look at how do you cover cost for certain developments and then you then the communicant can vote afterwards and say hey the implementation was really good we want to give you some kind of sizable tip on top of that because it's really useful and a lot of people are using it so that you don't end up with a lot of people who are doing these quite high uh, proposals of huge amounts for salaries like it's really difficult to figure out. Are people supposed to get 100, 200, 300, 400 dollars in salaries? I don't know. Usually it should be for the good of the protocol and people should accept a fairly low rate for, uh, for doing that an hour. And if the implementation is great, mm. I think everybody ex accepts them to pay some kind of a sizable tip for that in some yeah. way or form, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
kind of make, makes sense to me, in a way. But if it's, it's difficult, right? Because it's, just, it's still like, how do you measure these things and how do you keep people accountable? Uh, I guess it depends on reputation, right? Because somebody like is a zero knowledge expert with user experience, sure, but that might be they're the only one in the field and you just have to pay them, right? But then you have to look at, you know, do they have the reputation? Can have they delivered other things? Maybe start with something small. Yeah. And you kind of, you know, put in kind of a prospect, you know, let's do something small. You won't charge us that much. If it works, you'll get the big thing. Just like I mean, you do it in business, right? And yeah. maybe that's easier than... Yeah, I would say it's the same like in regular world, right? Not even in crypto. You have to build up your reputation slowly in order to you know, get your hands on a bigger pile of money, right? <clears throat> so maybe since you already mentioned the has anyone considered nay situation, so obviously you have to get into this. So, so maybe just to put there a bit more context to the discussion again. So recently on Kusama, there has been quite a lot of proposals, proposals that have been basically all right rejected by a huge token holder that he was able to vote with a high amount of conditions and rejecting various proposals, being it from the community for organizing events or writing content or for some of the infrastructure providers. And so, so how do you see this, see this situation? So do you, do you think if this is someone trying to protect the treasury of, of, or rather is it someone you know, trying to send a signal that maybe is something wrong you know, with the treasury spending and we should try to fix it as a community? So, so what's your opinion on this situation that we have on Kusama right now? So yeah. whoever wants to start. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a very delicate situation. Um, of course, the, the whole system uh, behaves in different ways. And one is what, what happens is that, of course, huge stakeholders, they, they care about the ecosystem. They see the treasuries being like um, kind of depleted. And maybe they are not uh, really like happy about what's happening. So what I can do with, uh, if I'm a huge stakeholder, I care about the system, I just vote no, right? And I try to stop this thing from happening. This yeah. is one thing mm -hmm. that can happen, but ca can you really stop like something like this? If you start maybe to stop, you look like uh, centralized um, or like kind of like uh, abusing the power. Like, who has the right to stop this kind of actions in like a system like this? Um, yeah, it's it's difficult. Like, the other way is that nobody do does anything and the treasury gets depleted, right? And then you need some like hard measures that needs to be implemented. The treasury must, uh, you know, like uh, accumulate again. Uh, people are not able to to do like uh, events or like build stuff using treasury funding. This is also another another perspective. I don't think it's it, it's bad necessarily. Maybe it looks uh, less um, uh, bad in the in the fact that you don't have like big uh, um, token holders that they are like deciding the fate of. Uh, of something, yeah, but yeah. Um, it, it's it's tough. I think it's um, who has the right to to decide. I think it's more like um, um, like I say, like an organism that regulates itself, and uh, this is what happening now. And you can decide to intervene, yeah. like the foundation can decide to like change uh, something. But then maybe you change something and. Uh, you create more damage, kind of. You disappoint the community. Uh, and maybe if you don't, if you don't do uh, anything in six months from now, everything, everything will be fine. But you did the damage. You know, it's, I think it's tough. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically mm. what you see is like a temporary disbalance of power that will kind of fix itself, you know, by the time. Yes, I mean, I don't know exactly what, uh, what is the best. I think also like doing uh, nothing and see how the system regulates itself because it's quite young implementation of this new governance model. Even waiting and see, it's maybe less detrimental than uh, actually implementing something and maybe creating more damage. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. That's yeah, I, I mean, I mean that's for sure. Like we are paving the way for the whole crypto industry right now. Like mm -hmm. I think the open gov is the most advanced form of governance which is out there, and the most inclusive one as well. So yeah, 
but there could be some bad stuff happening along the way. <laughs> but I, I'm a bit like the question is like who who would do something? Why should you be able to implement, right? Yeah, who has so, the right to, exactly. to implement? Exactly. So nobody has. Like you can make a proposal, and then maybe there's a new mechanism that is yeah. makes spending more strict, and then you know the this community that is voting on everything might say, okay, yeah, that's a good fix. We'll do that. But I, I think it's think of regulations, right? Something you know, there's Wild West. Something goes wrong. You, the hammer comes in, and you basically yeah. have like it, it's it starts to balance out slowly. So I think with people doing more quality proposals. I'm, I don't know, unfortunately, I haven't spent that much time recently looking up which proposals get rejected. Yeah. It might be that everything is rejected. But hopefully, I mean, the on-off-ramp proposal, right, that gives on-off-ramp to 10 parts in the Kusama, that passed. So there seems to be some distinction of what these people think is good, and, you know, it's their right to vote, so what are you going to do? Yeah, nothing. It's, it's <laughs> obviously, it's their right as a token holders, but on the other hand, like, you know, wanting name proposals without, like, any proper explanation, it's, like, something, and without, especially without the feedback for the one who proposed it, because sometimes proposal is really good, community is in favor of that, like, if you look at the number of, for instance, I votes, you know, it's, like, the high majority, but then, you know, Hack and Hammer comes in and, bam, you are screwed, so... But you also need a, a way of uh, uh, increase the turnout to make uh, the, the governance uh, people participate more actively because the turnout is it's very low and you want uh, all token holders kind of uh, um, participate, right? Yeah. And we, because we don't want always the same people to, to vote because then nothing really like changes really, right? It's all the same people with the same mindset, the same opinion, it's not probably representative of the of the bigger set, so probably it's also good to to maybe spread awareness. But how you do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the tough question. <laughs> yes, <I guess. laughs> but it's also not. There seems to be some kind of expectation, at least, of ah, I asked for a treasury proposal, and of course I'm going to get the money, and it it also shouldn't be that way, right? It should be like you are. You are fighting for your proposal because you have a conviction that this is a good thing for the ecosystem. So you go out, you actually do um, like work for getting people to vote for you instead of just I push it on Poker Assembly and then I hope no one comments and then I get the money in two weeks. It's like yeah. I think that's the wrong approach to it, right? You have to fight for it and you have to be have the right argument to say why should I why should Treasury pay for this and then. Of course, it's participation again. You need yeah. a lot of participation. If there's no participation and you get wiped out by someone that votes no, it's like that's the premise of the system and this is how governance works. Then come up maybe with a better proposal and get more support for your proposal when you, when you start out. I mean, an interesting kind of counter movement. So I, we went from council to open gov. And now we're realizing, well, maybe we need delegations, like cows, DAO, for example, to collect, right? Mm. Because in the end, you might want some experts or people who have the time and they invest the time and they have a stake. And, you know, maybe they even get paid. There's revenue for them to actually spend the time. Or they, you know, so you have like other systems like Arbitrum or Optimism, right? They have delegations now. And you have people who are like, have a lot of followers, they get a lot of delegations, but they actually then, you know, spend a lot of time in that ecosystem and kind of have the best in mind because they have vested interest in for some reason. Yeah. So you kind of, it's interesting to see we're slowly kind of getting back to maybe something in between opening off completely and, and council, which is pre kind of select or like very static to, you know, delegations and your know, people becoming vocal and hence more people delegating to them. And they, so you could have somebody who is super onto education and is able to make the case that why we need to spend more money on education again. And maybe a lot of people delegate to that person, and then they kind of, you know, might be able to sway the votes. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe we will see a bounty for that, who knows? <laughs> yeah, but this is, uh, I think it's also the good the point maybe to, to think about maybe a more uh, f philosoph philosophically, is you want people to make a living out of the treasury, or you want to people just to make the good of, uh, because of course, I mean, if you try to make uh, people make a living out of the treasury, then it becomes probably tough, right? Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of, uh, and how you decide this, you know, it's, you know, back on the point of Casper uh, that's yeah. saying that, um, you know, you, 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 you want to, 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's an important point to, to keep in mind because it seems like uh, the people, they just want to take some money because they, they, they want the funding and uh, this is on the long term detrimental and we have seen that is detrimental to the system. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. And so, so maybe would you be open to some alternative solution how to you know, get passed by this situation? So I heard some different proposals from community floating around, so maybe just give you an like, example or two. So maybe one of them, like, you know, the more tokens you have, the less you know, conviction votes would you be able to apply to give like, less power to, to the big token holders. Or maybe people who are like you know really deeply affiliated with the ecosystem, like for instance ambassadors, you know, should have by default you know maybe a higher conviction vote for them. So, do you think something like that makes sense, or should we leave you know the voting system as it is? I, th I think the convi conviction voting should be adjusted. Mm -hmm. I think maybe this can can help, you know, because uh, it's good that. Uh, it's more an, it becomes more an equalitarian like system where you don't have the same conviction applied to like uh, huge uh, token holders yeah. um, so it, of course there must be research that must be done but uh, sort of a like uh, weighted conviction in base of based on the stake that you have in order that on the long term it's more like everybody has the same voice this might be like uh, a solution I think but mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, maybe there are like uh, downsides. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the challenge is that in the, in the non-civil resistance system, either you introduce reputation, which then goes into the direction of delegation, delegates basically, right? So you have some yeah. people who, like, how do you identify who should have stronger conviction voting? Well, in a decentralized system, like, you, who decides? So again, you have people voting for some people who should have higher conviction voting, and you have a delegated system. And the challenge is, like, either you build reputations or you have completely anonymous users. And if you say, well, if a lot of stake, your, conv your conviction vote comes lower, well, what would I do? Split it in 100 mm -hmm. and of I course. circumvent that measure. So I guess, yeah, like... It's like mm -hmm. susceptible to civil attacks, obviously, but still makes their life more complicated and it kind of, you know, depends, like, whether someone is really want to split, you know, their stake into, like, you know, 1,000 accounts and do the vote from them. Like, I think yeah. encouraging good behavior is better than trying to prevent bad behavior. Yeah. Because yeah. you always find a way to around it, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think yeah, also yeah. looking at, there's been a lot of discussion, especially on the Kusama of like, ah, who is voting against me? And I think there's something to be said about anonymizing the way of voting, but still not like, fine, it's still based on, uh, on, on your token holdings, but the discussion becomes very much of like either you are for or against some kind of project they're asking for funds. And it just be like, you might have different reasons for voting for or against it, but I think there's a lot of people that don't participate because it just ends up being, ah, if I vote no and they see that it's me, then it's like, oh, but you're against these ones. And <laughs> I think at, at some point that is also like, you can get more participation if you anonymize the, the way that people are voting. Technically, this is, uh, this is not very easy, but, uh, but just to put more incentive to actually participate, rather than it being that the discussion becomes who voted against me, instead of figuring out how can I get more people to vote for me. Yeah, but on the other hand, I have to make a confession when, you know, our proposal was voted nay by Hacken, you know, obviously I went to subscan, you know, did some digging, like, you know, who the guy, who the guy, this guy is, you know, and maybe I can contact him, maybe I can, you know, get some feedback, so I, I, I would say that's the thing, if the feedback is missing, you know, that you are more encouraged to actually find, you know, who these people are, and if you can get in touch, because you don't know, like, Oh, uh, Why were rejected? Of course, you should get feedback on like, everybody should participate in discussion to get feedback on why they want to vote no or yes. Yeah. Because if you just get kicked out and you don't know why, then it's tricky, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's also, I would say it's also quite discouraging, you know, for a lot of community members. Like if you are getting voted nay, you know, without any proper feedback, then you maybe try again, you know, try to maybe adjust the proposal, you know, lower the funding or the amount you are requesting and then you still get night. So it's kind of like, should I stay in this ecosystem or not? So can be a factor. So, so since Alex, you already mentioned the delegations, I think that's really right way how to solve it. 
On the other hand, we are still missing, you know, like the proper UI for the web-based wallet. I know we can do it with Nova, which is nice, but if I'm using Talisman or Polkadot.js, there's basically no easy way how to do it now. So what would you actually propose to encourage like more delegations coming to, let's say, some community representatives like ambassadors or different like DAOs, like Chaos DAO, for instance? coming from the community? Like, what can we do better about delegations and how should we promote them to the wider community to use them? I mean, I, I think there is a, so um, if you look at Optimism or Bridgestrom, the way that was designed, I think was quite smart, at least in terms of user experience. So when you had to go and claim, like they did an airdrop, right? So a completely yeah. different setting. But when you claimed it, you had to delegate. So oh, you yeah, have this, yeah. like, you have to pick someone to delegate, kind of, and it forces you to kind of, you know, be involved. What we thought of on, on Intel basically is to um, incentivize. So basically, not everybody, you know, do it through incentives, not forcing people, but then say, okay, you have to vote on a certain amount of proposals, otherwise you receive less taking awards. And that's been discussed in our community, and generally there's a lot of positive feedback because, you know, you're, at, you, you sh you're actually spending time. Of course, you know, people then come online and just click randomly, but there is no perfect solution. Like, it depends what you want to do. Do you want to incentivize more participation? Hopefully, it leads to more people being engaged, like maybe one in 10 actually reads the proposal, or do you want to have quality? And then, obviously, you know, it, it's a challenging yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But I guess a, a UI would be great. So, you know, well, incentivize. Like, that's that's the start, you know, very nice, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and so what about you, Casper? Like, do you think that incentivizing, you know, governance voting is a good idea, or yeah, I think, it's, or is it a dangerous game to play? No, I think as long as it's neutral for like voting for or against, then you just incentivize participation. I think that's a way of sorting some of the issues because governance and the treasury is never going to be effective before. Well, hopefully, the majority of the token holders will participate, but. I think we are far from there, right? We are talking one, two percent if it's high. So I think if incentivization can help that, that's a good thing. Um, have to figure out how do you come up with the right incentive mechanisms so that you don't have just people are just randomly voting. Because I think we already see that on some proposals that, uh, that you have people that are just randomly voting yes or no and you don't know why. <laughs> yeah. uh, but. Yeah, let's put some incentives on, but the right incentives for getting people to participate and, 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 and see what happens. Like, we have to try it out. I think uh, Kusama is a great way for doing that and see if incentive, incentivized uh, voting works in some way or form. Yeah. And, I, and I think this is a nice point to mention. Like, luckily, we have Kusama, so we can allow ourselves to do some experiments around it, right, before it makes it way, it's, make, makes it way, it's, its way to Polkadot. Yeah. So, so this is definitely good. And so, since you, Alex, you already mentioned optimism, so do you think are there any other ecosystems we can kind of learn from how to do the democracy and the governance in a better way than we have it right now? I mean, I didn't say that they're better. They have a nice user interface, <laughs> yeah, but, right? But I mean, so like as a source of, <laughs> source of inspiration, obviously. <laughs> I mean, do you have to look at crypto? Can you not look outside of crypto? Like, if you look, I mean, I think just because we can do tech, it doesn't mean we're going to change how people behave. I think looking back, like, outside of the, you know, DeFi, crypto, Web3 bubble and how governments work, where they fail, and in the end, you'll run into the same issues. And you, I, I guess it's, you know, at some point, at certain certain scale, you'll have the same pattern just because people with power tend to get corrupted. So I think maybe looking you know, beyond and to maybe see like which governments or maybe local cities that try to experiment with kind of different models might be interesting. Because crypto, I mean, you know, I'm not sure how many people actually, you know, yes, we focus on tech, but do we have like people who studied like decades of like politics and like, you know, government, how governments work and fail? I'm not sure if we have that many people, you know, in crypto yet, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I think you need to get more people to engage with the proposals because I think UI is one thing and figuring out how, how it's going to be easy to use but also how does the general holder of Kusama or DOT how do they understand if a proposal is good or bad I think if there's no other information than the long proposal you can read on uh, on, on, on poker assembly 
then everybody needs to make up their mind on their own, which I think is quite difficult. But if you get a much more active discussion in some way or form and make that easily accessible for everybody to vote so they can figure out, hey, what is the pros and what is the cons? How do you get that in front of uh, people that want to vote so they easily can make up a mind if like, hey, yeah, this makes sense or this is uh, completely hopeless? Well, I think there's opportunity <laughs> right now for protocol politicians to actually step up and, you know, have like write up summaries, go on like yeah. Terms of governance, right? Like, like, like TV debates, and like step up and you know, like digest it and make it simpler. And then, of course, you get into the whole, you know, it's politics thing. But it's an opportunity right now True. for some people who really want to do this to step up and you know, become key opinion leaders, and yeah. then people will follow them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, I just heard we have only five minutes left. So I got the last question for you, and then we will give some space to our audience. So. Are we ready for Polkadot? After what we have seen in Kusama, like the open gov will be deployed on Polkadot on the 15th of June. So is it a good thing? Are we ready yet? Or maybe we should have taken more time to experiment on Kusama? What do you think? Well, I guess we have to be ready because it's going to happen <laughs> on June 15th. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> how you define the right time to deploy on Polkadot, right? Because I guess the um, um, deploy on Kusama and uh, waiting more time to deploy on Polkadot. I mean, you always find probably problems and uh, things to fix. So in the end, you just have to, I mean, at some point you just have to go for it, right? And, uh, and see how it is uh, on, uh, on Polkadot. But of course, it is important to understand that, uh, um, maybe you can correct me, but Gov1 will still be there. It was there also on Kusama. I mean, in mm -hmm. case for a fallback, everything that, uh, you know, needs to be changed on OpenGov, uh, Gov1 was possible to use, to be used on Kusama. Mm -hmm. It was recently, this option was re recently deleted. Yeah. But uh, I expect that uh, when they, it will not like a sharp transition that, okay, we kill uh, Gov1 and we just start from today with uh, Open Gov. It will be more smooth and more conservative than uh, on, on Kusama. So I think, I think it's, a, it's probably okay if uh, it gets, um, if, we, if we give it a shot already now. Yeah, yeah. so it's all right because there is still like a fallback mechanism in place, which is the council and the Gov1. Yeah. yeah. And I would expect it will be very conservative in terms of the parameters. Um, it will be different than uh, on Kusama. Already with, Open, uh, with Gov1, we saw that um, on Polkadot, it was more conservative in terms of decisions that were taken compared to Kusama. So I, I would expect that also will be the same with OpenGov on, uh, on Polkadot, that it will be a little bit more conservative. Yeah, and yeah. a bit a bit more cautious. You don't want uh, the same situation for maybe the treasury to happen, yeah. because then we be we didn't learn anything out of it, right? Yeah. Looking forward to see the action. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So guys, thanks a lot for participating in this panel. I hope it was interesting for everyone. So thanks again. And so maybe Thank do you. we? Sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have some questions from the audience? Anyone? Um, hello. Um, I'd like to ask if, um, if you have thought about some options to integrate uh, digital identity for uh, governance. But it is already integrated, right? You can get your, like you can, your accounts, you can you know, connect your name, you can authenticate. I think there is some somewhat centralized identity system where a few foundation has a bot that kind of a, does, does an attestation if you do on Twitter and so on, but you can connect your identity and based on that, you know, I, I guess you mean build Yo, on top but or... I, I mean like... Um, compulsory. Instead of uh, token-based voting, like identity-based. Like something like a proof of personhood, I guess. Mm. But we just went back from council. <laughs> <laughs> because councillors are at risk. So if not for regulations, I guess it would work. But then <clears throat> if you vote yes on incentives, you know. 
Yeah. Hello. Um, I am looking the the title to see what can we speak on podcast. And I would like that you share a message for other projects or blockchain that maybe they are thinking to get into Pocal, but still uh, need to take the decision to begin the process. But did you get Not it? sure I get that. Huh? I heard so something about new projects coming into Polkadot. Yeah, what, what is the message that you can share based in your experience to other projects that would like to get into Polkadot? Okay, so it's unrelated, not, not necessarily related to governance, but in general, I mean. Yeah, in general. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. You want to go? <laughs> well, you can go as well. Um, <laughs> I think, well, it's, it's about trying it out, I think, and talking to the ecosystem. I think this is the, for me, it's one of the things of, now I did the transitioning from being sort of in, the, in Web3, in the Web3 world and transitioning out to become a project on, uh, and, and working that. So going out into the ecosystem, I think there are so many resources and so many, people to interact with that um, that I think this is the best place to start and then trying it out. We have Kusama, we have, there are a lot of test nets and I think there's a lot of resources that uh, that can be used. And I see the ecosystem as everybody actually wants to help each other because if we all work together, this creates the idea of Web3. So, uh, so I think it's just a matter of going out there, asking people. Most people I met or anyone I met in the ecosystem is perfectly nice and want to help you. So, uh, so I think it's just going out there and talking to the ecosystem. All right, so I have a, one uh, quick question to anybody who feels like they know about it. So um, how about quadratic voting and quadratic funding? Do you think it could be used in the poker treasury? <laughs> What it was? Quadra whether quadratic Quadra voting should be used Basically, in the Polkadot Treasury. Yeah, the model that is currently used by, uh, by Gitcoin to fund uh, this different project. I mean, I, I don't have a strong opinion, I guess. Not no, but, uh, whether, uh, whether quadratic voting, quadratic voting, ah, quadratic voting should be used for Polkadot tre or Kusama Treasury. Oh. <laughs> Does it solve problems? Yeah, where exactly. In no, the end, I think we need, it's, it's again, it's the participation issue, right? You need people to participate. So if it's quadratic voting or if it's voting with, uh, with how many tokens you have or if you put identity on or if you make it uh, anonymous. However, I think it's a matter of how do we figure out that people actually want to vote. And it could also be delegation that you vote someone that you trust to actually take care of your interests. But as such, for me, it's like, um, Let's figure out how we get people to participate, and we can figure out how people should vote afterwards. But uh, the participation thing, problem, I think, is what we need to look at first. Yeah, like uh, first things first, right? But like eliminating the, for example, whales in the treasury can be partially solved by the amounts of people who actually vote, and that outweighs the big amounts of, for example, voting for a name. Um, if that would be considered, like if there is one person voting for an A with 10k Kusama, but there is 1k people voting for A with one Kusama, then there is probably some something going on, right? And it probably should be accepted, even though they cannot unvote, outvote the whale. That's my like take. But but how do you measure? So the thing is, you can maybe look from the outside. So if I'm a big whale and you have quadratic voting, I will split up into a thousand accounts with one Kusama and vote. Of course, from the outside, we can probably see, ah, okay, like, you know, these are very new accounts. We could then, tr and then you start, have to start, like, on, in, on the system, or well, what can you do, okay? Then you start, like, adding things like, okay, you, you, you know, account age, you add that, right? But then you actually, again, preferring very old people, probably who, are, again, are the wills. So I think, honestly, like, it's, it's possible, but there is no perfect solution because it's, a mm. it's not civil resistance. So either you have identities, like delegations, or you basically, you can't fix it because even if the more complexities you introduce, somebody's going to bot it, right? They're just going to sp split up accounts and they're going to get what they want. Okay, thank you. Yep. 
Hi, everyone. Um, I'm from Interchain Foundation, so it's super interesting to, to actually learn about uh, your governance as well. Uh, I was wondering, how are you guys dealing with the technical roadmaps? So, for example, when deciding to fund something, um, how are you, I don't know, how are you building the technical roadmaps? Was the question? I, I, I did. I didn't, I didn't. So how, how are we building technical roadmaps? Yes. So, for example, you you guys like you were talking about funding, right? The different initiatives through the through the treasury of the foundation. So, like, is there any roadmaps that are you like building for for the I don't know, the, the on the medium terms, long terms, to, or, like, to, or like how the 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 projects are getting selected, like based on what? that are getting funded. Ah, so I think you're asking about it, like how do people get funding from the treasury to build things? Yes, yes, so, like based on, yeah. So I think, well, feel free to disagree, or, or, but the treasury is there to help the ecosystem move forward. And applying for treasury funding is something that's generally useful for the ecosystem as such and not for like one specific chain but something basically anyone can use uh, so there's not really a roadmap because i don't think there's like a good idea about what is needed because i think we figure that out as we go along i think it would be good to have some kind of roadmap potentially from like a parity web three or maybe even from the from the fellowship to see if there's is there something that technically is missing that someone wants to build for the ecosystem that could be that could be a, a, a good way of doing it and i guess like maybe i would actually argue roadmap yes but not from fellowship parity web three because that's the same very technical group of people more parachain level but then how do you get people to collaborate because i think there's but yes i, I think it's it necessary. could probably be both yeah <laughs> Maybe, yeah, maybe from a power chain level, you want different things than one. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good old debate, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Like, we are, like, as well in Cosmos, we are dealing with this, right? So we are building, like, this vision or, like, trying to see, like, what's the scope of the foundation and what they, like, what's the role that wants to play, right, the, the Interchain Foundation. So, like, based on the vision, you would want to, I don't know, get some understanding of like what would be some like the big milestone ahead, like that where you want to go with the IBC, with the, I don't know, SDK and so on and so forth. So that's why I was wondering like, if you guys have, are, are you dealing as well with like this type of questions? But yeah, like it's makes sense. I think sense. it's also on, because there's a lot of stuff that's being developed by parity and by the parachains already. Um, and that happens regardless of the of the treasury funding so i think treasury funding is more for specific um, cases that want that initially needs to be to be built than sort of like a full-on roadmap for what happens with uh, substrate or, or or polka dot so i think it's much more of an add-on to to an overall roadmap uh, in at least in the polka dot and kusama ecosystems thank you so much Yeah, thank you for this discussion. It was uh, very insightful. And for me, it is a very important subject because uh, I would like to join more into the ecosystem, but so far Polkadot because it's very technical and mostly focused on the developers because we needed to build the rails. But now with OpenGov, we are actually going to start using the rails the developers actually build up. And I think Alex uh, hit a great point with that we don't really need to reinvent the wheel. We should, there is a reason why representative democracy was invented in ancient Greece and we are still using it. And that's what I really feel like is the beauty on, of OpenGov, that it is really simple. And uh, what we should really do is use the possibilities of the decentralization to just uh, efficiently use it in the uh, with blockchain and my question is you already have hit on this what do you th but haven't really discussed it what do you think about that the treasury should actually fund 
independent delegators that could actually just focus solely on kind of content creation on one side, getting more public participation in voting, actually uh, uh, giving, uh, giving public the information, creating all content about the proposals, then helping to set the rules and structures for and best practices on how uh, proposals should be actually made and then actually also control uh, or check how they are implemented because I think it's very important to have a lot of uh, independent delegators within the ecosystem that could actually uh, act as these actors within the ecosystem to help out with this and uh, if you think they should be funded by the Treasury or not or if I didn't get I mean I, I guess you yes but also no and the reason for the yeah it makes sense but then you kind of again the question who gets funded right the same question we have, as we have blockchain the... and you have and you have reputation so I understand initially you shouldn't get funded and live off the treasury until the point you establish a YouTube channel, you make a podcast, you have a Twitter account, you have a medium, you are making posts on uh, Polkadot forum and at some point you create enough reputation on chain and off chain that you kind of become as you said the politician and delegator and the beauty of this system is that the classical rep, uh, representative democracy works in a way that you vote for a politician once and then for five years you cannot change your vote. But the beauty of uh, delegators within Polkadot is that anyone can either split votes to different delegators or change at any time. So at that point, if you create this reputation and you actually like why shouldn't you be uh, funded by the treasury similar to Polkadot ambassadors? But you've, answered, you've answered your own question basically. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> if you are able to build a reputation, you may be able to get funding. So yeah. you, you've given the answer basically, right? <laughs> no, yeah, I mean... It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so... Thank you for the interesting question. So maybe any final words if you want, and we will wrap this up. Go out and vote. Yeah, all set. <laughs> Go vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, all right, perfect. So thank you, thank you guys again for participation. Thank yeah. you. It was a pleasure. Thanks.